I recently saw this vase design on LinkedIn. That's cool. I know how I'd model that. I'll start by sketching the profile of the vase on the front plane. I'll press L on the keyboard to start the line command, and then sketch the shape I want. I can change from a line to an arc by simply touching the start point of the line again. This peels off a tangent arc and makes it really easy to draw the shape I'm after and capture the geometric relationships I want at the same time. I'll click and drag my right mouse button upwards to use mouse gestures to turn on the dimension tool. Now I'll add the dimensions I want to use to refine the shape. I'll set the overall height to 6 inches and dimension the angle at the bottom to 30 degrees. This is my printer's threshold for printing without supports. Now I can revolve the sketch to create the basic 3D shape. Let's focus on the helical decorations on the outside. I'll start by sketching a single line on the front plane, making sure it's longer than the width of the base. Then I'll show the sketch we drew earlier. Now I'll create a swept surface. I'll use the single line that we just sketched as the profile, and then right-click in the empty graphics area to turn on the selection manager. This tool allows me to select one or more pieces from a sketch instead of using the whole sketch. I'll select just the vertical line from the first sketch and right-click to confirm my selection. The preview shows that my single line profile will be swept down my single line path and result in a pretty boring rectangular surface. But I can turn on twist control and tell the surface to twist 720 degrees. Now I've got a helical surface. I'll color the surface blue so you can see things better. I'll press the S key on the keyboard to launch the command search. Once I see intersection curve in the list, I'll click on it. Instead of picking individual faces in the graphics area, I'll select the bodies from the flyout feature manager and let SOLIDWORKS figure out everywhere they intersect. I'll press the tab key on the keyboard when my mouse is over the surface body so I can hide it and show you the awesome 3D sketch we just got for free. This is what we'll use as a sweep path in just a bit, but first I'll turn the lines at the bottom and the top into construction geometry so the sweep will ignore them. This time I'll do a solid sweep, and instead of using a profile that I've drawn, I'll use the built-in circular profile capability. I'll select the 3D sketch I just made and enter a 50 thou diameter. Before I complete the command, I'll uncheck the merge result option. This will allow me to work with the helical decoration independently from the vase shape. Now that I've created one curve, I can focus on creating a bunch more. First, I'll mirror the decoration about the right plane. Now I'll use a circular pattern to create 16 copies of each helix. For the direction, I'll choose the same vertical line from my first sketch. I'll add a shell feature to hollow out the vase and thin its walls to an eighth of an inch. Then I'll draw one more sketch on the right plane. It'll be the shape I extrude to cut an interesting shape into the top. Since this is mostly aesthetic, I won't worry about fully defining the sketch, but I will add a point on the circle and pierce it to the circular edge at the top of the vase. This will make sure my cut lands exactly at the top right of the vase. Now I can add a through all cut in both directions. I'll use command search again to launch the combine command and box select all of the bodies to add them into one. Then I'll tidy up the bottom of the vase. I'm using the cut with surface command here, but I could have also edited the first decorative sweep and turned on the align with end faces option. That would have eliminated the overhang in the first place. Either way, the vase is done, and we can experiment with all sorts of things. 